the producer of the once third largest stablecoin in the entire ecosystem, Terra Luna, literally went to zero, crashing 99.9% .9 in less than 72 hours. This has effectively destroyed public confidence in the term algorithmic stablecoin, which is terrible timing for the Jed because that is going to be launching on Cardano right around the corner. But is there a difference? Let's find out. Welcome Lake Game Crypto, my name is Josh and I'm here helping make smarter investments for Lake Game Games. Remember, anything you see in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. First of all, let me start by saying if you were directly impacted by the events of the Terra Luna crash, my heart goes out to you. I am by no means intending to demonstrate some kind of superiority or use your loss as a narrative driver to bolster my own investments. This crash was devastating. It was widespread and it affected even a lot of big names in crypto. Basically what I'm trying to say is I have no interest in using your misfortune to make myself feel better about the positions that I hold or some other self-serving motive. All I'm trying to do here is facilitate the most easy to understand side-by-side -side comparison that I possibly can here. So before I get started, help me out by hitting that like button down below to help me reach more people with content like this and as a reward to ease your pain, here's a clip of my cats when they were kittens. Okay, so I spent all of my free time last week trying to understand what it is exactly that happened in the Luna ecosystem so that I can try and explain it as clearly as I could as it's relevant to the Cardano ecosystem. Lots of people are theorizing what it is was the actual cause of it, and at the time of recording this video, nothing has been confirmed. But the most popular theories are, was it a scam, a coordinated attack, or whale games? And my opinion is that it doesn't matter. What matters most is identifying what symptoms it was that left the Luna ecosystem vulnerable to this kind of event happening. Even if it was a coordinated attack by big money, the question should not be, who do we have to blame for it? The question should be, what could be done in the future to make an ecosystem better, more resilient? Based on the best fundamental analysis that we have access to, there were three main symptoms that paved the way for Luna's crashing, and those symptoms are high yield staking, burning tokens, and circular utility. Some of these things aren't necessarily bad in themselves. It depends a lot on the circumstances surrounding it. In the case of Terra Luna, these elements work together to help push the supply of the stablecoin UST far above the actual value that was backing it. The failure of this stablecoin to keep its peg can be put pretty simply. There was not enough liquidity to distribute to UST holders that wanted to get their money back in fiat. So let's talk about each of these symptoms in a side-by-side -side comparison with the JED and UST, starting with high yield staking. In all fairness, your opinions on this point may derive directly from your economic philosophy. So if you're from a more conservative perspective on economics like I am, you'll agree with me when I say that a guaranteed 20% return is a bad idea. There are a lot of influencers out there that are still telling people that this did not have a substantial impact on the failure of the system. I really, really disagree with that, and I hope my simple explanation of why this is the case is easy to understand. You should always be asking yourself, where is the money coming from? If any given protocol is reliably making more than 20% on your staked funds, then 20% returns might actually be workable. But even then, it's still a pretty big risk to guarantee 20% at all times for the protocol because the protocol would have to be actively lending every dollar that gets staked with them so that they can reliably provide you with those funds. In the case of Luna, 
This was not happening, obviously. They were not making enough interest on lending out UST in order to continue paying their delegators that 20% guarantee. So, in order to keep up with that 20% guarantee, not only were they losing money, but really they were giving out money that they did not have. Or, in more direct terms, they were actively creating new UST tokens, distributing it to people, and that contributed to the supply of UST outpacing the collateral that they actually had. What Cody does differently with the Jed is, first of all, they over-collateralize their stablecoin by 400-800%. to 800%. This collateral reserves contains a treasury of ADA tokens and Shen tokens to ensure that there is always proper liquidity to provide to Jed holders, even in the case of a major market crash. But in regards to the unsustainable high-yield staking mechanisms, the Jed white paper has no mention of high-yield staking, and the only staking that it does mention is for third-party apps on Cardano that do not have the ability to mint new Jed tokens. The mechanism to mint new Jed tokens is going to be entirely with the protocol that is built by Cody. So there's no designed way that the supply of Jed tokens would outpace the collateral reserves. The main mention of any ability to earn rewards, as far as I have seen, is by buying the Shen token. And remember, always be asking yourself, where's the money coming from? In this particular case, Shen token holders get a portion of all Jed minting transaction fees evenly distributed among its holders. So if this is going to be a sustainable mechanism, be sure to watch for what the returns are going to be for holding these Shen tokens. But I can pretty much guess that it's, it's not going to be 20%. I would hope that after this debacle, people would start to be a little bit more distrusting of high-yield staking mechanisms, but I don't see that happening even at the influencer level, so it is what it is. Symptom number two, I think, is one of the less criticized features of this crash, and that's likely because this is something that is common practice within the greater cryptocurrency community, and that is the burning mechanism for the Terra Luna tokens. The Terra White Paper, section 2.5, says this. The system burns a portion of the Luna it has earned during expansions until Luna supply has reached 1 billion equilibrium issuance. Therefore, Luna can have a steady demand as a token with a pro rata rights to Terra mining over the long term. Token burning arguably, isn't necessarily bad in itself. Again, it's the elements surrounding the situation. Those circumstances in this case are the fact that Terra Luna tokens played an extremely important role in the Terra Luna ecosystem as the reserve currency that helps back UST. Luna tokens are not like layer one tokens like ADA or ETH that have other utilities that are backing its value. Luna's primary value proposition was to be the reserve currency for UST. So it's really not a good look if the value of your reserve currency is being artificially driven up by token burning. I know some people are going to have an issue with what I just said, but make no mistake, token burning is an artificial mechanism. Token burning actively takes tokens out of circulation in order to increase scarcity so that it might have the artificial effect of increasing demand. This is exactly the same thing as Russia taking oil off of the table to be purchased so that scarcity increases and it drives the price of oil up. The problem here is that the demand is not organic. Your user base or audience isn't necessarily growing, it's just that the price is increasing, and it's artificially increasing. I think you can kind of see where I'm going with this. If you have artificial value that is backing an asset that is supposed to be a stable value, that's not the making of a healthy ecosystem. The Jed, on the other hand, is arguably backed by a much more stable asset, ADA. Technically speaking, it's backed by two assets, and that would be ADA and Shen tokens. 
But the main value proposition for Shen tokens is that people are trading ADA for it, so that more ADA can be added to the treasury that backs the JED. So all that to say, really, I'm just counting ADA as the reserve currency. And that's not to say that Shen tokens are completely worthless. It's actually a really interesting mechanism that's totally worth reading up on to understand. But to keep on topic with this point, ADA has no burning mechanisms. It also has additional utilities that Luna didn't have. So the value that is backing the stablecoin here is purely based on organic growth and demand. Symptom number three kind of combines points one and two, but the utility here was very circular. I guess they kind of did try to attach other utilities to it, but in reality, the main utility of Luna tokens was that it was a part of the algorithmic stablecoin ecosystem. As we've already gone over, the value that was backing the UST stablecoin was the reserve of Luna tokens. This is a problem because both of these assets rely on the success of each other in order to maintain a healthy, stable relationship, and that's definitely not sustainable long term. Cryptocurrency is very volatile in general, so to build your ecosystem on the success of people having to constantly demonstrate demand for two cryptocurrency coins in order for the entire ecosystem to survive, it's just, it's not going to happen. Now, in order for the JED to maintain its peg, it is reliant on the value of ADA, but ADA would have to drop 75% in a day in order for it to come close to losing its peg, but even then there are contingency plans in place. I don't want to get too far from my actual point here. I will eventually do a video more in depth on the mechanisms of Cody's protocol and how the JED works and all that stuff. Look out for that. The point that I'm getting at here is that each of these coins are completely separated. The JED is so over collateralized that it can exist on its own and it doesn't necessarily depend on the fluctuations of ADA from day to day. And ADA has its own utilities that participates in the greater ecosystem, and that drives its value there. I actually just did a video last week about things that you can buy right now with ADA, and lending and borrowing platforms on Cardano like Meld are just around the corner, so ADA has plenty of utilities to keep its ecosystem and value constantly running healthily, independent of the JED. So, to sum all of this up, in a side-by-side -side comparison between Terra Luna's stablecoin and the JED, the JED does come out on top with greater resiliency mechanics and contingencies. However, this whole nightmare of a market crash should be a wake-up call for the concept of algorithmic stablecoins. Now that Terra Luna's algorithmic stablecoin has crashed and failed miserably, there are zero algorithmic stablecoins that have seen any respectable success. Cody and Cardano are building something that 100% of its predecessors have failed miserably and hurt a lot of people along the way. Not to mention that the JED has the disadvantage of having to live in a post-Luna world where there is fear of over-regulation from governments. This is really not the time for the Cardano community to be exhibiting any sense of arrogance or tribalism or any of that other crap that has come out of the culture of cryptocurrency. Now is the time to be careful, calculated, and critical, and I intend to apply those principles to the literature that Cody and Cardano have already put out and the information that they will be putting out in the near future. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification down below so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.